Thank you very much for the introduction. It's like working out. So today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about patient experience. It's a little bit different than some of the earlier talks you've heard about, but uh, at Philips we've always put the patient in the center of everything we do, much like every one of you does in, in your everyday world. But today I want to kind of concentrate on patient experience, which is taking it beyond just the diagnostic imaging portion, but actually in the full end-to-end -end healthcare delivery for that patient. I think everybody recognizes a lot of the changes that are occurring in healthcare today. A lot, of, a lot of what we see in radiology is mirrored throughout all of healthcare. Specifically, we're seeing a lot of changes towards consumerization of healthcare. As consumers or as patients get more knowledgeable and have access to more information, they're able to actually bring that information into, the, into, into their healthcare itself. In addition, we have access to a lot of social media aspects, so they're constantly ranking and rating what we're doing today. And that's a very different dynamic than we've had in the past. And as a result, we're seeing changes in imaging. Specifically, we're seeing that we'd like to be able to engage those patients because their loyalty is very, very important, because their loyalty is not just their own, but their family, their friends, and their extended social interactions. That then is, is reflected back on the referring base, so the referring doctors themselves. If you have a happy patient, you have a happy referring physician. We're going to spend a little time today talking about the continuum of care, looking at basically not just during the diagnostic procedure itself, but actually throughout the entire care of that patient. And we're going to find basically that consumer choice is actually changing the way that we deliver care today. This is not, too, not, not a completely new concept, but in, the last, in this last year, the Barrel Institute had a, a nice publication where they showed that basically almost 90% of all patients viewed that their experience was more important to them than many other aspects of their health care. Of course, at the very center of all of this is, their, is quality care. So they want to have a definitive diagnosis, and they want to have that in a timely and understandable way. But their whole experience, how, they, how they're handled from the beginning to end is actually of equal importance in many cases. And this is not lost on healthcare systems. Almost an equal number of healthcare systems themselves view patient experience as a very, very important co concept. And now this is reflected throughout a lot of the very, very important parts about how we operate a, a, a radiology department. There are repercussions throughout. So an unhappy patient typically means unhappy staff because those, patients, those staff are on the front lines and they're dealing with those unhappy patients. And that the anxiety and the, and the unhappiness that those patients bring is reflected in similar kind of unhappiness and anxiety in the staff. That then lends itself to non-optimal workflow and therefore operational workflows and operational hits in terms of cost that is incurred that is not necessary. And so it's very, very important to be able to see if you can engage the patient, have good patient experience in order to minimize those costs. This is a very complicated slide, but from a patient perspective, the way that they look at their healthcare, they don't think of things like we do in radiology-centric world, where we say we own the patient after the referral until the actual delivery of the, re of the read. But they look at it from a continuum. So they look at the referring physician and the consultation. They look at it in terms of scheduling, in terms of arriving at the, uh, for the exam, the exam itself, and then actually being able to get a timely and concise and understandable uh, conveyance of the information at the end of that read. Each one of these different steps is both a pain point, a pain point that can actually, that pain point can actually act as a detractor, but actually on the flip side, it's a great place to actually deliver a great patient experience, and that will convey throughout this entire uh, process. If we look at it at the top in terms of the consultation or the referring physician, there's a lot of different places where the, 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 the uh, patient can actually uh, be engaged. And uh, one of the specific areas that it comes back over and over again is that the patients want to know the right information at the right time. They want to be a part of their healthcare decision making. And so being able to get that information into their hands is extraordinarily important. During the procedure itself, there are a variety of different things that, uh, that are important for engaging the patient. The number one one that comes back over and over again is respecting the patient's time. And that comes back in basically making sure that the patient is seen in a timely fashion. And then after the procedure, being able to get the results and get those results into the referring physician's hands in a timely manner is very, very important. So every one of those pain points is an opportunity for improvement. 
Paul Natchi had a great paper about two years ago, and he was looking at basically a, the patient experience in a kind of holistic manner. And he divided it up into six different main categories. And I won't go through each one of these because that would take a little bit too long, but I want to kind of concentrate on the top headings of these. Most important for almost all patients is to respect their patient's values. Every patient, our families, our, our, our friends, come with a variety of different expectations based on culture, based on background. Having a respect for that and being able to, uh, to uh, administer to that is very, very important. The second category around the coordination of care is extraordinarily important, and we hear this over and over again. And this is basically coming back to, can I actually make an appointment? Can I get in? Can I be seen relatively soon? And once I actually arrive for my appointment, can I be seen in a timely fashion? Coupled with all of this is actually being able to access, having nearby access to be able to have that imaging, do imaging done itself. Variety of other uh, concepts here. The other one I think I want to concentrate on primarily is around communication. One of the most important things for a patient undergoing any procedure is that they actually feel that they're involved. What we find when we interview patients is that often they feel disempowered. They don't understand what is happening. They don't understand the next step. And as they, as they progress through the healthcare system, they feel that they actually have no de degree of autonomy. And so, even though they won't necessarily have the ability to change every step, being informed about every step actually gives them a feeling of autonomy that's very, very important in their patient experience. The other, the other things that are listed here are actually, I think, relatively straightforward. Physical comfort comes back over and over again. Of course, you want to make sure the patient's comfortable during the scanning procedure. That's comfortable beds. That's making sure that the temperature is there, is, is set correctly, that there is uh, blankets available, that, uh, that uh, everything is fast and clean. The good thing is, in radiology, is that we're actually doing a pretty good job today. Almost 80% of patients looked and said that they actually were happy with their referring physician and they were happy with the procedure that was administered in the Diagnostic Imaging Center. But however, if you look a little bit deeper, one level down, you can find that basically about a quarter of all patients are actually unhappy with their exam preparation, so that's being told about how to prepare properly for an exam and make sure they arrive in that, in that state. The scan itself, making sure that they're comfortable, that they're not in some degree of discomfort or pain due to existing um, uh, complication, and also that they receive the, the results that they get in a timely fashion, and also not only just a timely fashion, in a concise and understandable fashion. This is all very, very important as we move towards patient satisfaction being linked tightly to reimbursement. And as, as most of you understand with HCAPs, that actually is, 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 is done today. And we'll see a, a variety of different ways extending into the radiology field as, as time goes on. Now, how does it actually connect to the bottom line. This is very important because patient experience is not just about keeping a happy patient so they return and they come back with their, pa with their families and friends, but also there's an operational cost to an unhappy patient or unprepared patient. If we look at a couple of different common uh, aspects of an unprepared patient, a patient who actually moves during the examination, they may move because they don't understand that they shouldn't move. They may move because of uh, being in discomfort. There's a variety of different reasons. That has a, a, a direct cost, basically, that it can be amortized, if you will, across every scan. So it's actually a reasonable cost. Incomplete exams, basically exams that basically are performed, but they have to be aborted because the patient is either in discomfort or that they are claustrophobic or a variety of other reasons, also lends itself to a hitting the bottom line. And then another area, which is a broad area, which means is in patients who are anxious, who actually who are who are. Or don't, don't necessarily understand the importance of their exam, often they actually don't show up for their exams. And you see about 5 to almost 20% of, in some cases, of patients who don't show up. And when you have a slot-based um, uh, booking system that has a 30 or 45 minute slot set aside for that patient, this is actually a direct hit on the bottom line. So good patient preparation can lend itself towards decreasing these department costs. I want to kind of walk you through one example here, but I think most of you may have seen a paper, but about one in five MR exams has repeated, se repeated sequences due to patient motion. That adds up over time. If you add up all those lost minutes, that's about $120,000, $115,000 per scanner per, per, uh, per, per, per year. 
And so $120,000 is not anything to sneeze at. That's, that's potentially a large part of a technologist's salary. It's potentially a, uh, it's the, it's a service contract. It's a variety of different things that actually go towards the actual operations. And this is lost money. And so if you could regain that, it's actually a very important part of actually being able to run your department. And this is all related, can be related to patient experience. So a patient, in this case, I'm going to show you one ex example. This is a site where we installed an Ingenia with an inboard solution. An inboard solution, and you can find out more about it on the booth, an inboard solution has basically auditory and visual cues for the patient to keep them both distracted but also to keep them in a low anxiety state. And that actually allows them to uh, keep still for longer and actually in this particular case lowered the number of repeated scans by about 70%. And so that goes directly to the bottom line. And it's a very straightforward um, a solution for that. So I didn't have time to go into a lot of different details today, but I wanted to kind of leave you with one message. If you come away with one message is that patient experience is a holistic approach. It's about optimizing the care of the patient in each of the different steps, looking at before the imaging exam, so making sure that they are well informed by their referring physician, that they are well prepared for their exam, but also during the exam, making sure they're comfortable, making sure that, uh, that they are actually uh, compliant in the cases of motion or other aspects. And then after the visit, being able to deliver that information to that patient in a way that is understandable to them so that they can actually make an informed decision about their, their next steps. All of this is important, and you'll see this permeate throughout the booths as you walk around today. There's a variety of different uh, uh, both imaging solutions as well as both software and hardware-based solutions that actually address uh, various parts of this full holistic uh, approach. One of the things that I think you really want to take away is it's not just these three steps, but it's actually the conveyance of the patient across those different steps, a smooth workflow as you go move it from left to right on this particular approach. With that, I'd like to end and, uh, and to entertain any questions that people might have.